electrons and all particles have this fundamental property that we call spin. If you're being super lazy about it, you can think of it these particles as charged spinning metal balls, but that gets you the wrong answer. So it's important to paint a quantum mechanical picture of what this property of spin is. And all we have, all we really have, we don't have an intuition to guide us here. We don't have prior experience to guide us here. Uh, we haven't evolved to understand spin at a quantum mechanical na nature so that when we first discovered it about 100 years ago, it was new. And we just had a list of properties, like a list of rules of how spin operates. And these rules are pretty weird. Particles, different kinds of particles can have different amounts of spin. And by convention, just by definition, it made the math a little bit easier. Some particles can have spin half. Some particles can have spin one. Some particles can have spin one and a half, two, two and a half, and so on. And that itself is, okay, kind of interesting. Like there's fixed levels of spin that any particle can have. But, you know, a particular particle like an electron has a certain mass and a certain charge and it just has a certain amount of spin. But quantum mechanics being quantum mechanics, it gets a little bit messier than that when we go to measure the spin. Because the spin isn't just uh, a magnitude. It's not just a number like the charge or the mass. It's just a number. You, you record the number and you're done. That's the mass of the electron, the charge of the electron. But the spin has a magnitude and a direction, right? An electron can be spinning like this. It could be spinning like this. It could be spinning like this over here, over here, point towards you, point towards me. It doesn't matter. Any, you pick up a random electron, it can have any random spin at once. It, the, the amount of spin, like how fast it's spinning is always the same, but it could point in any direction. And we have limits to how well we can measure that direction. If you set up a magnetic field that's say pointing up and down and you shoot your electrons through it, it will split those electrons, that group of electrons into an up and a down based on the spin. And so we can say, okay, uh, these electrons, this half of the batch, had uh, spins that were pointing up-ish, maybe a little bit up, maybe a lot of bit up, but were up-ish. And then this other group that got deflected down, they were happened to be spinning down-ish, maybe a little, just a tiny, tiny little bit down, maybe all the way down, at least some part down. So uh, but that's it. That's all we can measure. That's all the that quantum mechanics allows us to measure is that if we have an up-down magnetic field, we can sort the electrons into ones that were pointing at least a little bit up and at least a little bit down. That's it. We don't know how much up and down because we'll always measure the same number that one half. Uh, we'll either measure plus one half or minus one half. That's it. We don't know how much left and right. And we don't know how much uh, forward versus backwards. Quantum, the rules of quantum mechanics forbid us from fully measuring the properties of an electron spin. And that's something very kind of spooky. This is quantum mechanics. You know, quantum mechanics is all about uh, uh, fixed energy levels and limitations on measurements. And this is like the quintessential quantum mechanical property. Fixed energy levels, there's only a certain allowed values that a particular electron can have when it comes to its spin, and we are fundamentally limited in how well we can measure that. We don't get the full spin information, and we never can. No matter how clever you think you are, you can't beat quantum mechanics. You will only ever measure uh, this much up and that much down. That's it. If you, if you took your magnetic field, and turned it sideways so you had a left-right magnetic field, then some electrons would go left, some would go right. Based on how much of their spin, if they were pointing just a little bit left, they get put in the left bucket, and they point just a little bit right, they get put in the right bucket. That's it. 
And you don't get to combine that with the measurement of the up and down or the front and back. You can't do them at the same time. In fact, you destroy the information and it gets super complicated. It's just, it's just really, really fascinating to me how much mother nature is hiding from us in these rules of quantum mechanics and how it comes out in spin. And this wasn't known until the 1920s. Hey, it's me again. I know you just watched a few minutes of me, but who couldn't use a little bit more me? I'm just here to beg you to please subscribe. And if I remember, there's going to be a button like right here uh, where I'm vaguely gesturing. So if you like what you just saw, uh, you'll get more of it if you subscribe. Super easy.